Hello, everybody. This is John Fenn, Church Without Walls International, C-W-O-W-I dot O-R-G. And hey, if you're listening to this and watching this within about a week of when I've made it, uh, I wanted you to be aware you can go to our website. I'm doing uh, three webinars next week. That's November 6th. There's one. And then November 9th, there are two webinars. They're absolutely free. You can register, sign up at our website, C-W-O-W-I dot O-R-G. When I don't travel so much during the winter, I like to stay in touch doing uh, webinars, and you can sign up for that and follow the instructions on our website. So anyway, hope to see some of you next week as this is being recorded live, but that would be November 6th and November 9th. Stay tuned throughout the winter because I'll do them uh, usually once a month or so. Anyway, today talking about the spider incident. <laughs> you know, when I was younger, you can't tell it right now at age 61 as I'm recording this, but when I was younger, my hair was blonde. And being in the in the 1970s, I had naturally curly hair, uh, and it was kind of afro-like because you know wore it long, and it just would blow in the wind. Uh, it wasn't quite like uh, Ross Paul Dark, if you're familiar with the PBS special and the show on on uh, Paul Dark. It wasn't quite like that, you know. But it was it was bushy. It was out there. And the first year of our marriage, I worked outside. I worked for a ministry that was developing a property. And uh, my official title was park ranger, although I really wasn't a park ranger. I did landscaping and I did chopping wood and cutting brush and showing little old ladies how to get to such and such building or whatever the case is. And I worked outside. So every night I would, I would take a shower and wash my face and wash my body real good, wash the grime and the dirt off and everything. But I wasn't in the habit of, of washing my hair every night. Uh, it, it just wasn't. And so my hair was long. Barb and I are in our first few months of marriage and we're lying in the bed one night and we're talking and everything. And, and, uh, Barb looks over at me and out of my hair, out of that Afro, that blonde, frizzy, curly hair crawls a spider, <laughs> a spider crawls out of my hair onto the pillow. And, and of course, back then Barb was freaked out by spiders. I mean, she just did not like them at all. She still doesn't like one. You know, she's never met a spider she likes. You know, that's my end of it. I like tarantulas. I like jumping spiders. I like stuff like that, but not her. So I'm really in bed and out crawls this spider. And she just jumps out of bed and, and uh, kill the thing. And, uh, you know, I take care of it and everything. And you know what happened? I had to march right into that bathroom and take another shower and this time wash my hair. And do you know that was a life-changing event? We've now been married over 41 years, I think it is, <laughs> something like that, 40 years, going on our 41st year. And um, and to this day, if I've been working outside or if I've done something you know, outside, I still wash my hair uh, before I come to bed, you know, nearly every night, in fact. Uh, and so, and so that was a life changing event. And so the question today about the spider incident is, are we missing sometimes the Lord's messages to us? Are there things that he's using to try to get our attention and we are, are dull of hearing or we're in the process of working through it? Um, you know, sometimes it's a matter of priorities. Um, things that we should notice that should change the direction of our life or the Lord's messages to us that we don't always notice. In John chapter 1, verses 40 through 42, Andrew, Peter's brother, brings Peter to Jesus. It says, Peter, we have found the Messiah. Here he is. Uh, Jesus this is my brother, Peter. Peter, this is the Messiah. <laughs> this is Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah. And, and that is all that's said. It's John chapter 1, verses 40 through 42. That's their first meeting. But Andrew's claim that Jesus was the Messiah had to have stayed with Peter. And he had to contemplate that and think that over. My personal opinion is that Peter wanted to believe Andrew, that they were obviously both looking for the Messiah. But I think Peter needed something. I think he needed something in life to confirm that. And that's part of what I'm saying today to you, to, that an event can happen in your life and you're not sure if that's God or not. But you may be like Peter, who, who thinks maybe it's God, but you need a confirmation. It's okay to ask the Lord for a confirmation. Now, what happened in Peter's life is that after this brief introduction, which we're told about in John chapter 1, verses 40 through 42, the next time we see them is in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. And in Luke chapter 5, Jesus is wanting to borrow a boat to take advantage of the acoustics uh, to speak to the crowd. So he borrows one of Peter's boats. We're told that Peter, James, and John were partners in the fishing business. That's verse 10. 
of Luke chapter 5. And so he approaches the partners. He says, can I borrow a boat? He, he launches it out from land a little bit, and he speaks. He takes advantage of the acoustics of, of sound carrying over water. So when he's done, he wants to pay them, basically, for the rental of the boat. And he tells them to, to launch into the deep, launch the nets, plural, into the deep. And Peter says, you know, we've fished all night, nothing's happened, but at your word, I'll let down a net. So Peter disobeyed, but he partially obeyed. He lets down one net, the net breaks, they call over both boats. Both boats are almost ready to sink because of the catch. And the net, the single net is breaking, whereas if he'd obeyed Jesus, both nets wouldn't have, would have survived the load. But when he gets to land, Peter falls on his knees and said, depart from me, I'm a sinner. I think Peter needed a confirmation to Andrew's claim. I think he needed a spider in the hair moment that caused him from that point, <laughs> caused me from that point on to wash my hair each night, that I think Peter needed a, a, a spider in the hair moment. I think he needed a confirmation that was going to change his life because verse 11 says that they, Peter, James, and John forsook everything they left their business as it was boats on the shore right there with that load of fish and they began to follow jesus it changed their lives but i think peter needed that confirmation i think he he had to think it through and he needed that uh moment to contemplate it see sometimes life's emo moments just hit us like a ton of bricks they hit us like a, a cold washcloth on the face and it's like wow this is life changing and those can be the tragedies in life those are the things that just absolutely someone's someone makes a decision that affects us and we are just devastated there are other things that happen through the course of life that we contemplate that we think on and it's like okay this may be god it may be not i need a spider in the hair moment i need a boatload of fish moment i need something to prove the claim and so i think that's what was going on in peter's life andrew had made the claim hey brother we found the messiah here he is and peter's like okay maybe maybe not i'm going back to work and then later jesus borrows the boats gives them a, a load a boatload of fish two boatloads of fish and peter falls on his knees recognizing the miracle and says, depart from me, I'm a sinner. Instead, Jesus says, oh no, come with me. You're going to become a fisher of men. And so we may need that incident. There's, a, there's another situation um, in John chapter 6 in which Jesus um, had, had multiplied the loaves and fish and fed more than 5,000 men and women. And then in chapter 6, he, if you'll recall, walks across the water uh, to the boat. And so when he gets there, a group of people had walked around the edge of the lake and they said, Jesus, how did you get here? You know, and he's not about to tell them I walked on the water across here and then translated the boat to the other side. According to John six twenty one. as soon as he got into the boat, immediately they were at the other side, a distance of about five or six kilometers, two or three miles. And, uh, and so they said, how'd you get here? And instead Jesus launches into a series of very difficult to understand parables difficult for them to understand parables that's going to separate the wheat from the chaff it's going to he, he told them flat i said you don't follow me because of because of anything i've said you're following me because you got your bellies filled and so he starts saying things like you know moses provided the manna for them to eat but i'm the real manna. you have to eat my my flesh you have to drink my blood uh to enter into eternal life and that parable separated out the wheat from the chaff even many of jesus disciples in confusion decided not to follow him thinking man he's gotten way off course he's gotten off balance now talking about cannibalism and everything and so some of his disciples many of his disciples started to leave but it had the effect that jesus wanted when he spoke the difficult words the true believers stayed with him and those who were just on it to get their bellies filled or to see a show you know left and so in john chapter 6 verses 66 through 69 Jesus turns to the 12 and he says, are you guys going to leave too? And Peter boiled it down to the core. After seeing all the miracles, after hearing all the teachings and everything else that Jesus did, Peter boiled it down to the core in verse 68. And he said, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe you're the Christ, the son of God. In other words, Peter was willing to say, I don't understand right now. Life is very confusing to me your words are very confusing to me but i recognize at the core you have eternal life and i'm not going anywhere and that's what we have to do in those moments of life that are confusing we need to realize there are the spider in the hair moments there are the boatload of fish moments that that we may not understand everything else that's going on around us but we boil it down to the core and make it a life-changing event that's that in spite of what's going on we know we come back to our core 
that Jesus has the words of eternal life and we believe he is the Christ, the son of the living God. To know him is to, to know that and to honor that and to follow that. But many times we need a wake up call. Many times we need something that grabs our attention, that causes us to boil things down to the core and it becomes a life changing moment. At the core for me, if I wanted to be, be married, to continue to be married to my newlywed bride, then I was going to have to wash my hair at night, especially when I was working outside, lest another spider crawl out of my hair at some future time. So I let it be a life-changing event and started washing my hair every night when I came home from work. So I hope you have can look back over your life and look at those moments and let them be life-changing. Boil it down to the core of what you want. For me, I wanted to stay married, <laughs> so I began washing my hair. What do you need to do to continue to follow Jesus? He has the words of eternal life. You may not understand everything else that's going on in life, but if you seek him and his kingdom first, then everything else will fall into place. All right, I hope it's been a blessing to you. Talk to you later. I hope you can join us for one of the webinars, November 6th and 9th. Go to cwowi.org. You can register there. God bless. Bye-bye.